Hello and welcome to this latest edition of Courses on Demand brought to you by Forex.Academy. In this course, we will be discussing leverage and margin. There is, of course, inherent risk when deciding to trade the financial markets. So just before we begin, please do take a moment to familiarize yourself with the following disclaimer. So let's go straight in and, and tackle the real uh, the real reason behind the risk or the real availability for risk in trading the financial markets, leverage. First of all, we'll look to define what is leverage and actually give it a good explanation with some various examples. Obviously, you're aware as financial traders that there is an element of risk when trading the financial markets. It's, it's how we tackle, it's how we approach that level of risk in our trading that actually will deliver success over the long term. So we'll explain that in a lot of detail. Then we'll move on to discussing notional trade size. When we decide to trade these markets, whether it's a Forex pair or whether it's a commodity like gold, oil, silver, uh, perhaps something like coffee, cotton, there's always a notional trade size. How much of the actual commodity or asset are you trading in the real world? And how does that relate to the initial capital that you have on your trading account. That then brings us nicely into discussing trading lots. And that's really how we assess and how we attach a level of risk to any position that we look to take and trade in the financial markets. We look at both 0.01 lots, um, 0.1 lots, and of course, full one lots. Um, and, and we can always refer to those as micro lots, mini lots, or the full trading lots as well. So we look at that in a lot of detail. We'll then discuss leverage itself as the risk factor and how that relates to margin on your account. Really, your margin is a good faith deposit for your uh, ability to actually take on and assume these risks in the financial market. And then we'll discuss that actually practically on the trading platform, looking at taking on some risky trades, taking on some not so risky trades, and, and really discussing the difference between uh, those positions really and how it might affect your trading in the markets. So let's move on then. What, first of all, is leverage? Well, within the financial services industry itself, hedge funds and other financial institutions send and receive short-term loans to one another. And this is a very large sum amounts of money. Now it's perhaps for a very short time, they may lend perhaps $10 million, uh, 10 million euros to over the weekend perhaps for short-term rates or for sort of short-term positions just to actually have that extra capital to hold as margin as well. This is to allow them to assume more risk and increase the leveraged size of their own positions. And what we refer to this in the financial markets in terms of a financial sector trading is gearing up. Now that is actually no different uh, to our own trading as retail traders. We too, as market participants, can gear up by accessing higher levels of capital with which to trade from, and that's done via the broker. This enables retail traders to enter trading the many asset classes that offer leveraged products, such as contract for difference. Okay, so that would be uh, the more common uh, approach we would look to trade these markets. Obviously, there are other products leveraged, such as binary options, uh, perhaps futures contracts and um, perhaps uh, some spread betting accounts as well are often available to the retail traders. We prefer contracts for difference just given the structure of the product as a leveraged product as well. Leverage itself allows traders to increase the buying power of their initial capital in order to profit from smaller fluctuations in the price of a financial security. Okay, this security may perhaps be a futures contract or a global commodity like oil um, or commonly a CFD on a particular Forex market like the Euro US dollar. So let's just reverse back on this and discuss this in a little detail. So whether we decide to trade something like perhaps oil, the oil market, well, if we think that the price is going to rise in oil, we don't actually look to, to buy that, to actually physically own that commodity and maybe stored in a garage for a period of two weeks until hopefully the price rises and then we can sell it for a profit. No, no, as as traders, as market participants, we look to agree with these uh, level of contracts in the market, whether it's a futures contract or whether it's a contract for difference. It's between two parties 
one agrees to buy one agrees to sell the asset at that price and they simply speculate on the price that actually that product itself allows us to trade the leveraged product of perhaps a barrel of oil which is maybe uh, too expensive or too difficult for us to actually access so that's the main point leverage effectively enables traders to actively participate in financial markets that would otherwise be inaccessible or perhaps too costly to trade and again perhaps a too costly to trade example would be well perhaps something like 10,000 euros if you want to trade the notional trade size of 10,000 euros you don't necessarily have the capital for 10,000 euros but you want to take advantage of these moves in the markets well leverage will allow you to do that perhaps with a small account size of a 500 euros you could maybe access that amount and given the leverage factor on your account so let's delve into this in a little more detail again to reiterate leverage makes trading the financial markets more accessible to you and me okay leverage is essentially the rate of multiplication to which you can trade so it's effectively the multiplier or the risk factor of your trading position um, again to use the euro or, or forex example it can actually allow us to trade very large sums of money perhaps 20,000 50,000 euros of notional trade actual cash value against a depreciation or an appreciation of that currency and again from perhaps a smaller amount size of 1,000 or 2,000 euros so we can actually access these markets in such a way to take on uh, leverage and risk this multiplication of your funds held on deposit allows you to trade bigger size and access more markets and leverage allows you to pay less than full price for a trade giving you the ability to enter larger positions than would be possible with your account funds alone so that is the same as suggested there just with the financial sector itself they want to take on hedge funds often do this pension funds as well when they want to trade in the markets will look to the financial services sector for short-term money on deposit uh, simply those interest rates and that's that's effectively what LIBOR is for in terms of short-term money lending if you're in the UK uh, the London inter offered bank rate effectively for loaning short-term money to another party but the aim is to uh, gear up for your investment so that you have an access to larger capital to make the trade perhaps once the trade is performing you can take some profit out of the trade and within a few days uh, look to give that money back into the financial sector so that's something we can do with a small account size we can access these marketplaces and actually look uh, to trade quite large sums of money in terms of notional trade size now obviously there is risk involved in that and we'll discuss it throughout this webinar the assumption of leverage is an essential product for the retail trader to trade the global financial markets okay the ability to greatly increase notional trade size expands our purchasing power as traders it is absolutely imperative that this acceptance of risk be understood and respected and that is why we at Forex Academy here have plenty of risk management courses. We are big adv advocates of actually trading the markets with a very consistent approach in terms of developing risk management and protecting capital. And it's it's very much the professional approach in terms of not looking to, to trade or speculate in a gambling manner with these marketplaces. Always respect the risk that you're trading. So let's try and explain this in a little detail perhaps for the beginner or novice trader that is perhaps thinking of entering the markets for the first time we can use this example to highlight leverage quite quite well and the question i would like to pose then is do you know any learner driver who takes their driving lessons in a porsche absolutely not uh, i do not indeed and that i would assume would be the same answer for many of you learning to trade the financial markets here do you know any learner driver looking to start their lessons by driving a Porsche no uh, why would why would apart from the obvious why would that not be a good idea well it's the same as leverage that we can view it in this manner if leverage is used incorrectly it can have a devastating effect on your trading account so novice traders what can they often do they can take too much risk perhaps start an account with 500 euros and effectively and unfortunately blow up that account or lose everything and that's because they've taken on too much risk so let's go back to our Porsche example if we're looking to start our first ever driving lessons in a Porsche 
well, I know that it's quite sensitive to drive, it's quite speedy, it's quite fast, uh, perhaps the gear uh, change is much more difficult than a, a something more simple to drive, a Ford Fiesta. It's just a very dangerous car for a new beginner to learn how to drive. So let's look at our trading accounts here, and that might be the same. For a 1,000 euro account at perhaps 400 to one leverage, well, what does that mean when you actually look to set up an account with a broker and they offer you different leverage accounts? More generally, they will offer 200 or 400 to, 400 to one. That actually means that you can trade with your 1,000 euro account, a notional trade size potentially of 400,000 euros. So if you were to, hypothetically, if you were to start your, your first account with 1,000 euros, you could effectively take risk in the financial markets of that amount of 400,000 euros. So if you take full risk on your account, 100%. So you can see quite clearly and quite obviously that that would not be recommended. You're taking on too much risk and the market really doesn't have to move against you too much for your 1,000 euros to effectively um, be wiped out. Let's move on to our 1,000 euros hypothetically with an 800 to one leveraged trading account. That has the potential to trade a notional trade size of 800,000 euros. So can you see that that is just too much leverage to access if we're if we're actually looking to trade the full 100% risk on our trading account? What we want to do is aim to reduce leverage as much as possible when trading and learn how to drive in a much more suitable car. Why is that? Well, it's simply safer, guys. It's simply safer. We want to approach the markets with our education. We want to develop consistency. Um, it is true that when you take on more risk, of course, there is more profit available, but you might have four or five very, very profitable trades indeed. And then if you have no risk or taking on too much leverage or perhaps no stop loss, you can often see those earnings, those winnings um, erode quite quickly. So trying to develop your idea of leverage, trying to uh, take that on board with your risk assumption is always the wisest approach uh, when deciding to trade these financial markets. Let's discuss notional trade size. Now a very important factor indeed, and one that is often overlooked by many a financial uh, market participant. Notional trade size or NTS is the overall position size of a leveraged trade wherein a small amount of invested money can control a much larger position in the markets. Accurately calculating trade size is a crucial component of risk management strategy. What we should do is accurately be aware of the notional trade size for each market you trade. So what is this really in layman's terms? What does this mean? It means we need to know what we're actually trading. And I don't mean what market or product are we trading? Are we trading gold? If we're likely going to be trading the gold market, well, we know that we're going to be trading gold as, as we open the market and begin to trade. What it means and what it refers to is if we are trading gold, do we know with our trade size, perhaps how many ounces of gold? If we decide to trade um, perhaps the oil market, do we know effectively how many barrels of oil we decide to trade at our given uh, volume? If we decide to trade uh, the US dollar against the Canadian dollar, do we know how many US dollars we actually have as a position size? If it's uh, if we take a rather large trade size and we're in the market trading and it's moving five, five euros per pip and we think that's perhaps good. If someone was to turn around and say, you're actually trading $200,000 there of actual cash. Would that shock you? So these are all the things that actually relate to trade size, notional trade size, and the amount of leverage that we are assuming in these markets. So let's go through just with some examples here. We have a table just jumping in from the right there. Uh, and we have, first of all, Forex, uh, or Forex markets there. We have equity indices. For example, the FTSE there in the UK. And we can discuss commodities, and we have an... Uh, an we have gold here as the example as well. So let's just go through them here in terms of uh, defining the notional trade size for these markets. Well, 
one standard lot for the forex market sir as you look across either the the majors minors or perhaps some more exotic pairs 100,000 of base currency is your one lot so we can see that one standard lot here is our uh, our base of 100,000 so it's, that's that's quite a lot that's a large uh, trade size even by placing that so here is our 100,000 for our one lot uh, a one mini lot size is 10,000 uh, euro against the dollar uh, for our base currency and that is a, a 0 0.1 zero lot now what we call there is the mini lot and then what we have is one micro lot size and that is 1000 of base currency and that is perhaps that is 0 0.01 of trade size so you can see it's quite well defined in terms of looking at uh, the uh, looking at trading the forex pairs that's that's actually the same in terms of input value for the indices we have a FTSE, which is simply one index, is one, uh, and then obviously the fraction of that is 10, and um, 0 0.01 index point is actually 0 0.01 at micro lot size. The gold as well, uh, considering it's, it's a commodity, we have gold weighed in ounces. So actually one standard lot in the gold market is 100 ounces of gold, so we know that, and that is effectively our one lot. A one mini lot size there is uh, 10 ounces of gold obviously as the fraction and then if we decide just to keep our risk small we want to uh, try and decipher how this market appreciates and depreciates in terms of one ounce of actual weighed gold we know that we can trade a 0 0.01 uh, micro lot for the market so very self-explanatory there but it is actually in position sizing for these trades that you'll become more accustomed to trading the markets with your risk appetite and perhaps your strategy set out. So perhaps you want to trade one of these markets here with your actual position size and you'll need to know then uh, what size you'll actually look to trade. Uh, let's use a, an, an indice here for example we want to trade the FTSE and we have an account size of perhaps 1000 euro You'll often um, do some mathematics or, or some equation to let you know, and we have obviously a risk management calculator to help our students with this, that perhaps um, if you want to take a 2% risk on that trade, it might be something like 0 0.04 that you'll be looking to trade on the actual account. So this is how we look to position in the markets with, with you know our, our account size relative to, to the amount of risk we like to assume per trade. So let's move on then and actually look at this on our uh, trading platform regarding specifically the trading lots of markets. So here we have uh, our new order uh, that is just in the top left of the MP4 platform. That is where we'll look to execute all of these trades and then we get our order box that will pop up center screen. Here then we have the instrument. Um, here we have the Euro Pound and it'll tell you Euro versus Great Britain Pound. So obviously the euro is the first leg of this currency pair and the pound is the second currency pair. So when we see this market rise, that would dictate to us that the euro is stronger than the pound. And when we see this market fall, that would dictate to us uh, vice versa, obviously that the euro is weaker uh, than the pound and the pound is stronger than the euro during the trading period. What we can see here that we have highlighted in yellow is our 0 0.01 trade lot size micro lot and if we result to our notional trade size again, we can see that a one lot within this market is relative to 100,000 euros. A 0 0.01 lot, therefore, is relative to 1,000 euros of cash to trade from the appreciation or depreciation of this currency pair. So that's fine. That's, can you see the difference there? That's absolutely fine in terms of a very small risk trade. Let's move across to perhaps uh, looking at some other markets here. We have, uh, there's the, the uh, euro pound again. We can actually see uh, a one lot notional trade size again is actually inputted into our volume. And that is relative to uh, 100,000 euros of trading uh, in terms of actual cash that you'd look to trade across this market. So you can see that's a huge position to take in these markets. And here we have a US oil, WTI crude oil. Um, we have inputted into our volume 0 0.10 or 0 
and that is referred to as a mini lot. What does that mean in terms of how many or notional trade size for how many barrels of oil? Well, we know that one lot is 1,000 barrels of oil. Therefore, the fraction of that uh, is 0 0.10 is 100 barrels of oil. So that's a relatively a strong position to take in the markets, but it's, it's within good risk management. It would depend on your account size, of course. But you can see that there is a big difference from your one lot to the 0 0.1 lot in terms of trading size and both uh, the, the cash that will rate, relate to on your trading account and the size of the actual um, market position that you're taking with 100 barrels there in the market. So let's move on to discussing then leverage and margin and what that means for our account. Well, the marginal requirement is the amount that will be taken from your account and held as a deposit when a trade is open. Okay. Different markets have different margin requirements. So do be mindful. Uh, you do need to be careful with, with the amount of margin and, and requirements that uh, that you will need to assume some of these trades. Margin is a part of your net floating balance, whether it is positive profit or negative for loss. So what does that mean? Well, that simply means when you start uh, your initial account, let's say you start an account with 1,000 euro and you accept one trade, um, perhaps at 1% risk. As that market moves either positive or neg negatively, let's say um, for discussion purposes, it moves into a profit area and the profit on the trade is at 23 euros. Then your account size is 1,000 and 23 euros with your open position. So the actual floating balance of your margin is actually relative to uh, the positions that you have concurrent in the market. Again, on the flip side, if you have 1,000 euros and for some reason you have a 200 euro uh, negative position, well then your margin will be much less. It will be 800 um, margin considering you have a negative position on account balance. Margin can become a sizable amount of your account balance depending on how many trades you have open and the size of those trades. So what does that mean again? Well, it means that this good faith deposit, this margin that you are able to put up in terms of accessing these markets and looking to trade this risk is actually held on your account just, just at that moment you're in the trade. So again, let's use our example of a 1,000 euro account. If we were to perhaps take, take on five trades in five different markets at the one time, that may reflect quite strongly on the actual amount of margin we have left because as we increase or as we put on each extra trade, there will be a certain amount of capital that needs to be locked away um, as a good faith deposit in terms of accepting the risk on that trade. So it's not always a good idea to perhaps have you know, 20, 30 open trades at the one time, specifically for those smaller accounts. And that leads us on to discussing that it can be a barrier to trade. So if you just think logically about that, um, you have 1,000 euros and perhaps you're trading in five, six different markets and some of those trades are winning and some are losing and some are perhaps 50 euros to the negative. Well, then your margin is going to be greatly affected by that. Perhaps you only have 100 euros left of margin, which is not good. So if you decide to take on another trade or perhaps see a very good technical setup that you do want to take, you might not have the capital um, in terms of actually um, putting that trade on for risk. So it can become a barrier to trade. Okay. What I, what I want to do is really explain this to you in detail um, practically on the trading platform, leverage and trading risk. So when, when we discuss leverage, when we discuss margin, how does that relate to actually our trading risk as financial traders? Well, here we have the Euro US dollar here. We have no technical analysis. And I would like to point out that this is just our JFX demo account. So there's going to be no analysis in this trade. But in terms of looking at it more generally, if we zoom in on the price action, we can see that we have reached um, a bit of a consolidation period above these highs uh, and lows here. So we've just seen a bit of a pullback with today's price action. Perhaps this could look to trade further to the downsides. So what we'll do is actually look to sell this market. But what I'm going to do is to place three trades with different uh, associations of risk or notional trade size or leverage to show you how that may affect your trading account. So we can just open our um, 
our balance here at the bottom. This is our uh, our actual screen to let us know what trade positions that we are in and what we can actually assume in the markets. What I'll do then is place three similar trades. Again, this is our Euro US dollar. Let us place, first of all, as we press new order, this pops up um, on the other screen there. Let's just change this to 0 0.01. Uh, we're going to trade the euro dollar again we're selling this uh, candlestick here just to the right of the new order screen and um, looking for this market to continue so i'll sell uh, a notional trade size of 1000 euros i.e a volume of 0 0.01 and that market ha that trade has been placed there now what we can see straight off the bat is initially we have accepted the trade position it has cost us in terms of the spread of the market which is absolutely fine that's the cost of doing business in these financial markets, we can see that that is effectively uh, costing us uh, not a lot at all. The commission has been 0 0.04, so it's four cent really. It's nothing uh, that will really affect our trading over the long run, considering we obviously look to become profitable traders. And that the position size itself, as the market trades, it's really trading um, with you know one, two cent per pip. So that's fine. If the market was to go perhaps 100 pips, we might look to make, you know, in and around um, uh, one, two, three euros. So um, we're, what we're looking for is actual large moves in the market. So what I can do is just to show you what this actually relates to. Let's just go back to the platform here. And what we'll do, we'll modify this order and we will look to perhaps just pick a price point here for our take profit. Perhaps 122.81, 1.2281. As we input that into our platform, we can scroll over and that will tell us that if the market trades down from this trade, we're actually looking to make 12.72. So $12.72. So that's absolutely fine. You can see how the risk on this trade is small that if the market moves down today or over the next two days, we're looking to make $12 off that trade. So we're, we're feeling, how are we feeling about this trade? Quite objective to the trade position. We're not under any pressure. Uh, of course, we look to put a stop loss in there, uh, which I didn't do, but that's always how we approach these markets. Again, this is a demo account. Really what I'm looking to show you is the effect of leverage on this account. So let's move on to actually placing the same trade, really. We're gonna sell this market again with our new order and we're actually going to trade a 0 0.1 so there we have placed the exact same trade and you can see just as i highlight then with my um, desktop pen again that the second trade has actually taken on a little more leverage and is actually showing us a 0 0.6 and it's moving 10 cent per pip so you can see that the spread is actually the risk factor is multiplied we can see that's affected in the commission at 0 0.4 cent um, and then 40 cent for us for our trade. And again, as the market moves, the risk factor has been multiplied. We've taken on not 1,000, but 10,000 euros of notional trade size and the market looks to move. So if the market then trades down to this level and our take profit is there, we'll look to make not $12.70, but $127. Um, dollars so you can see it's been multiplied there so let's just go back again and um, not that isn't the hugest trade but you can see it's, it's relatively large in terms of what we're looking to do in the markets and uh, perhaps it's too much for us to trade what is certainly too much for us to trade let's place the exact same trade again with a one zero lot a full lot of currency and what this is re related to is one hundred thousand um actual euros cash in the markets and we'll sell at that price so straight away that we can see that the risk factor has been multiplied we can see that we're effectively in the same position that that has cost us seven euros for entering the trade we can see the commission for the trade was four euros now four euros is a relatively small amount considering we are looking for a very big move and obviously we would make quite a sum of money if we were correct and this um, market actually looks to trade to the downsides but what we can see is the leverage and the margin here we have an account balance of seven thousand four hundred and thirty three dollars we only have um a margin there of two seven five for the 
account and the free margin is actually 7,000. So we've taken a full $275 from our margin uh, and that's quite significant in terms of one, two, three trade positions with our, our trade size as well. Uh, I should point out that Forex markets are notoriously cheap to trade as well. So that's why they're often preferred. If you're looking to trade other assets, that margin would be much more extensive in terms of the margin for capital needed. So that's just one example. We can see we technically we have uh, three positions in the market. We're selling the market. They're more or less the exact same trade, but you can see the risk factor has changed for trade uh, one, two, and three here. We can see as the market moves, it's moving in smaller, more medium, and very large incremental shifts in, in actual cash itself. So people react very differently when trading this market and, and taking on too much risk. Let's discuss the webinar then in its review. What we discussed was leverage itself and trying to define it with some good explanations. We uh, by now should know inside out notional trades as what that means for how many perhaps barrels of oil we're looking to trade, how much currency we're look, looking to trade and what that means in terms of trading lots on your trading platform. We know leverage is the risk factor and what that really means in terms of uh, margin on your account or the amount of capital needed for placing trades and how does that relate to you as a trader with your own risk appetite trading these financial markets? That's always the key question. That finishes off our assessment then of leverage and margin, a very, very key principle for us as financial traders. So all that's left for me to do is thank you very much for joining us on this installment of Courses On Demand brought to you by Forex.Academy. We do hope to see you very soon. Bye for now.